Okay. Any questions? Can you can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Good. Thanks. Um, a lot of information, by the way. Very good presentation. Very good information. Um, I want to more. I want to know. Underst I want to understand more about the the projects that don't quite hit the one thousand square foot. Uh, because what I think is going to happen as an architect, I'm going to see a lot of people trying to use a 900 square foot addition instead of full, you know, they're going to try to squeeze as much as possible until it becomes a norm and they understand that that's part of their cost, you know, that they have to build it all in. Um, because, um, you know, also the delays to get building permits, we get a lot of developers that really want to get going on their projects and getting the projected Hertz rating the modeling, that stuff takes time, you know, and, and they don't like it. They don't like the time because it means more interest rates, uh, more money on their, on their loans, right? It's, it's somebody else's money that they're using and they have to pay interest on that. So I want to know more about that part, if, if possible. Absolutely. No, very good question, actually. Very, very good question. So um, I have had, it's interesting that you're saying about this thousand uh, square foot addition limit uh, I have had actually uh, people or the building inspector or commissioner has suggested my client to do your project in two phases, for example, so you can avoid this, you know, or something like that, you know. But uh, the bottom line is actually I found out instead of going through the hardship of doing redesign, you know, to make the square for the etc i think frankly any projects any projects that well first of all any projects that you're doing with any size addition and you are fully gutting the existing part of the home there is absolutely no problem it's not that difficult to get it down to hers 52 or below it's not a problem okay we're going to help you with that. Now, the issue, I mean, the challenge usually comes when you're doing over 1,000 square foot and doing partial renovation, or you're not doing any addition and you're doing partial renovation, and it's still, because it's over 50% or, you know, building commissioner or building inspector tells you he wants hers rating, that is where the challenge is. So let's get an example of you're doing 1500 square foot or you know 1100 square foot addition and you don't want to touch the rest of the house, right? But they still expect you to get down to hers 52 or lower. Our solution is really the okay. Let's go. Let's get back to the original. So, what is the problem? What is the problem with this uh, that you have existing home which is finished and you don't want to touch it? The main issue we see usually almost 90% of the time, uh, um, weatherization have already been into these homes. And they have this, if there was no insulation in the walls, et cetera, they have dense packed exterior walls. They have taken care of the existing attic. They have air seal and they have blown in insulation, plenty in the existing attic. So it's all said. We, I, I say this because I know we used to do weatherization back in 2009, 2010. So I'm very familiar with that program. We do used to do hundreds of these projects. So, and, and, you know, uh, so, so insulation part is not a problem, even though if you have two by four uh, versus two by six cavity, you know, um, you have at least R13, R14, R15. So that's not where your problem is with the existing part of the home. Of course, and the, uh, of course, the mechanicals needs to be upgraded if you have old boiler, et cetera. And that's not going to help, definitely. And uh, But the main issue that we see with the existing finished home uh, that you don't want to fully gut it is the air sealing part. That is where you get a high blower door number 
and it's gonna damage your hers index. So what we have found out, there are two main things that totally damage your uh, score, your hers index. Number one is that if your plumber has used pure electric resistive water heater, those damage your hers index by nine to 14 points. And the other thing is the blower door testing. Blower door testing, in fact, can also affect your incentives. We have seen when the blower door test results improve, uh, you know, I don't know uh, exact numbers, a few hundred by a few, maybe a couple, you know, if more than a few hundred uh, CFM. All of a sudden, the incentive amount jumps up a couple of thousand dollars too, just because of blower door uh, number, you know. So, and that is shows also that how much um, air sealing home is important. People don't realize it. I mean, in the past, also we, as building science people, etc., we didn't know. I mean, nobody knew uh, the effect of air tightness is that much until we did the we invented the blower door system so we could measure it and until we have good models so we could actually simulate it you know after we do our energy model in the computer model our computer model runs an hourly simulation for the full year to calculate so this is not a joke you know it's not just like a calm check or rest check or you know as such to do or or for that matter manual j manual s we do all this type of modeling as well but those are junk comparing to the uh to the woofy modeling for passive house that we do or the um the the ecotrope modeling etc that we do for hershey so the bottom line is um that yes the blower door test results can affect it so uh so now there is a solution with the ABS, as you saw it in the video, okay? Now, the question is, the only challenge with Finnish home is that uh, you need to cover, or so what we recommend, either for occupied existing home or for renovation project, you know, existing finished part of the home, we recommend that the builder, for occupied home, we recommend that a homeowner hire a moving company, put a box outside of the house, and then move their furniture and stuff into the box for one day. And then uh, um, <clears throat> then hire a, a painting company to come in and cover all uh, horizontal finished surfaces, all vertical walls, windows, etc. they're all going to be fine vertical surfaces and ceiling would be fine. The only issue is the hardwood floor, carpets, <clears throat> kitchen cap, uh, you know, kitchen cabinets, etc. that you have. Those need to be masked off with um, four mil poly, at least four mil poly thickness uh, cover and then taped around the edges, but we don't want them to tape the seam between the wall and the floor, because that's the area if there is leakage, they want to go. So this is the, this is the process. So when we <clears throat> pressurize the building to 100 Pascal or the house to 100 Pascal, <clears throat> we create a fog with the alcoholic based water-based material is totally environmentally friendly. We pressurize and that fog goes and super air seals the home. The fog has no interest <clears throat> to go and attach itself, itself to vertical surfaces unless there, it finds a hole. It finds a differential 100 Pascal pressure between inside and outside. That's when the uh, fog uh, is going to have interest to go and try to seal uh, the hole. So otherwise it has no interest. But the thing, Ali, if you're joining us, uh, we are just uh, finishing, just bear with us. 
you can uh, you can come in as well if you like um so uh, but once we take the problem is once we take the pressure off after the end of the process the gravity is going to bring the fog down okay to the finished horizontal surfaces if there is a subfloor it's not finished it's not a problem you know you, you are going to cover it right but if it's finished you want to save it then you can do that now the thing is this is unlike isonine and a spray foam material i don't know if you have worked with them if that thing gets you know that isonine is chemical it's a nasty chemical if it gets on your shoes or clothing good luck taking that thing off okay you probably have to throw it away uh, but this one since our colleague water-based material it, we recommend if within 24 hours you should send you know you should send a couple of guys with a bucket of water and a, a you know wet rag if any residue they can wipe it up so my point is there is a solution now you know, thanks to ABS, air barrier sealing, there is a solution that you can resolve this uh, partial renovation issue with a large addition or as such. You can get it down to Hertz 52, uh, you know, with some additional cost. But as I said, your incentive at the same time may cover some of that cost as well. But at the end of the day is that you get a much nicer home in terms of comfort sustainability you know smoke etc now always i give this um <clears throat> analogy when i do my presentation i don't know if i mentioned it but this is uh it's like you know having insulation in the past we thought having insulation in the house is sufficient you know it's going to keep our house warm but i give this analogy you wear a cotton shirt, uh, a sweater in the winter time. Outside is zero degrees or 20 degrees. That cotton has R value. When you go outside, it's going to keep you somewhat warm. But up to the point that there is, when there's a little bit of wind coming at you, you're going to freeze to death. And the solution for that is what? Is a a simple thin layer of raincoat right you put a raincoat on the top of it you zip it up and now you feel nice and warm and this is exactly what happens to homes you have a well insulated home but drafty then you think you have r20 on the on the exterior walls why the heck i'm cold because that r20 if air is going through it, is no longer R20. It's probably R11 or R12 because the effective R value comes down if the air can go through it. Because And that is why now we are so particular about when we do our midpoint inspection, <clears throat> we make sure, for example, on exterior walls, the code is that the air barrier has to touch on all six sides against the air barrier there can be no gap between insulation and air barrier because that creates a <clears throat> small a cavity and that creates a com um a loop a convection loop inside the wall assembly or for example in the uh, in our attic or roof line we are no longer allowed to use fiberglass in the in the roof assembly because northeast as you know is the only region in the whole nation we use a strapping for our ceilings the rest of the nation doesn't use it it goes sheetrock against the rafters or you know floor joists here we use a strapping that quarter inch of strapping when you use fiberglass bat is going to create a gap you know, a quarter inch gap. And that's why we cannot use fiberglass bath anymore in, in Massachusetts. Okay, it's against the code. So again, air, um, air movement is important. So as I said, not only it 
uh, it improves the comfort level of the occupants when you have an airtight home. It also helps sustainability of the building. It also helps vapor movement because vapor uses air as a vehicle for movement. If there is no air movement, there is no vapor movement. Um, it helps a smell transfer because the smell, as we know, you know, it moves with the air. Uh, it helps sound transfer <clears throat> because sound cannot transfer in vacuum, as we know it. It needs air again. So, and it helps, uh, of course, insect transfer, right? Insects uh, <clears throat> can come a uh, hard time. I told you about the <clears throat> sealant. Um, you can wipe it out with a wet rag within 24 hours easily. I have a chisel here. I mean, I have we scrubber that we use sometimes for large multifamily to scrub the subfloors, you know, with the concrete when they have concrete. And after a month or two, I gave you a utility knife. You cannot take it off. I have to use a machine to scrub it off. It gets that hard. Okay. So anyway. We have the technology now so it can move and then it can help you guys as an architect to save time to not redesign and think about, you know, threshold of thousand square foot as such. There is a solution now. Did I answer to your, uh, this was a very long answer to your, uh, you know, small question. Well, but. you said that, yeah, there were only two things that, that the rating was being hurt by and it was that plumbing far right and then the air part those are the, the two but like what, frankly, so what frankly, do we need to do I don't to know. those now, to those other ones yeah, yeah sorry yeah. That, yeah. that's interrupting you uh, mm -hmm. if you have connection please uh, th this is the policy thing i have no idea why still they sell they allow to sell these or they allow manufacturers to produce these pure resistive electric water heater they are totally disaster okay. for this 21st century homes. I think I regulation, they should not it's allow to do that. that. Sorry, that. I interrupted. Um, Go ahead. Please. Yeah, what I was going to say was, um, but, then, but still, what do we do for the uh, homes that will be less than 1,000 square foot? What's required right now on the base code? For those are less well, than 1,000 <laughs> square foot. That brings up another yeah. challenge, actually. You can go potentially open your approval of your well, the inspector and commissioner, you can go prescriptive path. So with, we can still do the, you kind of call it, call the junk, the comp checks and rest checks type of things, right? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Is that no, what wait, it is, wait. the prescriptive? Or, no, or, no, 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 no. No, first of all, for a stretch code towns and a specialized code town, no more rest check. Mm -hmm. Only rest check you can use for those 50 base code town that they have left in Massachusetts, which are most of them are in the western. I mean, they are less and less in the eastern Massachusetts. You can find them anymore. So no more rest check. Mm -hmm. If it's a commercial space, you can use come check. Now, but prescriptive path for residential means everything is prescriptive. Uh, if the if the if the code uh, says, for example, you need to have R twenty uh, cavity and plus R five continuous insulation, you have to do that. If the code says R sixty, you have to do that. Now, doesn't matter if that is a two by four structure, old structure, or two by six or what not, the code says that if it says windows has to be such and such U factor, you have to do that. Whereas the performance path, as I mentioned, you get trade-offs. The code doesn't care. As long as you get down to Hearst 52, you are okay. You can have trade-offs. You, you can go R49 for your ceiling and you know, do something better, you know, air sealing better or duct leakage sealing better or better water heater or whatnot, you know, is trading off, right? So you get those trade-offs, but, um, or, you know, 
anyway so that is the answer so press so but remember always when they said the code you, you example of yours that you say less than thousand square foot you're saying uh prescriptive always you have the option to go with hers 52 or if you want to make your home passive house you always have the better option available to you but prescriptive is good but also can sometimes create its own challenges again because of the limitations that you have and also another thing is it's still sometimes the duck leakage testing you still have to do blur door testing you just still have to do so i mean all of those are costs and plus the fact that if we don't do hair trading then we cannot put your uh all, you know clients project into the utility program so we cannot get them incentives so utility requires hers rating basically anyway very good thank you so much you're welcome any uh question on your end other